Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day. And today's problem is rod cutting and it is a medium level problem. So this particular problem is a very very standard problem. It's a standard DP problem. And we will also explore like what are other similar problems and how it is different from those problems. I will try to give you an idea of uh, how you can identify whether a problem can be solved like this. And we will discuss both top down and bottom up approaches. Right. So the problem basically says that we have been given a rod of length n inches and we have been given an array of prices. So basically if this is an array that means if you cut a rod of length 1 then you will get this particular cost right you will get this particular profit. If you cut a rod of length 5 let's say so you will get this particular profit right so this is what the prices array says. Now you have been given the total length n inches and you have to cut that particular n inches of rod into some uh, lengths such that your total value is maximized or total profit is maximized right so let us see how the first test case works and then we'll discuss this problem further so the first uh, test case says that uh, we these are the given prices that we have so this is for length one this is for length two this is for length three and so on right and now they say that the maximum optimal obtainable value is 22 by cutting into two pieces right so one is of length 2 and one is of length 6 so you will see that the value of n is 8 right now you can obtain this particular value by cutting a rod of length 6 and then a rod of length 2 now if you try to look at the prices so this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 this is 5 and this is 6 so 6 is 17 and 2 is 5 so 17 plus 5 is equal to 22 this will be our maximum possible answer and if you try any other way this forming an answer would not be possible right so this is a standard dp problem and let's see what are all the other similar problems which can be solved in a similar way but how they are different from this particular problem as well right so there is one very uh, again very standard problem called staircase problem staircase problem so they say that you have like n steps and at each step you can climb either one two or three stairs right now you have to find what are the total number of ways to climb these n steps so that right, i'm just giving you a one possible way so let's say the value of uh, n is eight so you can climb one and then you can climb two then you can climb three right so this is three four five six and then again you can climb two right so this is this total is 8 and you have climbed a total of 8 stairs right now if you change the order of these elements let's say you first climb 1 and then climb 2 then climb 2 and then climb 3 now this is a different way right these two ways are independent of each other and they are different hence they should be counted twice now one way can also be 3 1 2 2 this is also a valid way this is also different and this is also be, this should also be counted but you will see that this particular problem is a bit different from today's problem right what is the difference so in this case you will see if you are taking two rods of length 6 and 2 right if i have I, if i would have taken a rod of length 2 and then 6 does it really matter the order in this case doesn't matter only how many rods i'm taking of a particular size matters right so if i'm saying that i am taking x rods x rods of y length Right. This is the only thing that matters in today's problem. And no matter in what, what order I take them, it doesn't really matter. So how do we actually solve this problem? Since we want to conserve our order, maintaining a DP of single state would not be helpful at all. Right. So we will maintain a double dimensional DP. Now what does this DP array indicates? So let's say the first index will denote that what is the what is the current uh, length that I am dealing with? So let's say that this is denoting current length that I am dealing with. Right. So let's say this is that information. And let's say there is uh, the second DP array is going to denote uh, what is the remaining length. Right. So let me just like, move it. So this is the first part and this is the second part, right. So this is denoting what is the current length I am dealing with and 
this is denoting the remaining length so current length means you see that i have a price array right i have a price array so this is denoting length 1 this is denoting length 2 this is denoting length 3 so let's say i am trying to take a rod of length 3 my remaining length is n so if i take it my price that i will get is price of 3 and my remaining answer will be dp of 3 and then n minus 3 if i do not take it if i do not want to take it then my answer will be dp of n3 3 n and then i'll move on to two position and then n will remain as it is right so these are the only two transitions possible so there is one thing that you will observe or you will find very interesting about the first dp transition that this is the price associated right with this particular transition good enough but what is happening in the second part is that i am not even moving from that particular position you see that i was at dp of 3 and i am still at dp of 3 why is it so because i have tried considered taking it once but it might also be the case i might also take take it again right so i subtract that particular length from my total length but i am still at dp of 3 right so that in the future if i want i can take it again but what happens if i don't want to take it in this particular case you will see that i have moved to the previous position now once i make this particular move once i make this particular move to the previous position it is not possible for me to come back to three right so this is something that you have to keep in mind so how does it really solve our problem so it will help to solve our problem in a way so for example if i am considering the length three all the times that i am considering the length three will be together right now if i don't want to take three then i'll come back to two right again all the times that i am considering two will be together if i don't want two anymore i'll come back to one so you will see no matter what we'll do these these issue will not be caused because the order will always be fixed all ones will be together all twos will be together all threes will be together why i'm telling you the reason again if i'm trying to take a particular length then i'm not moving from that particular rod length right i'm still at the same rod length in case i might want to consider it again but if I don't want to take it anymore, I am moving on to the previous length or a smaller length. Right. And there is no way I can come back from here to here. Right. So I'm never coming back to that particular place. This is the whole idea why we do it like this. Now, let us discuss how we can solve this. First of all, in a top down approach, and then we'll also discuss how to convert it into bottom up. Right. So let's say this is very simple, not very difficult. Let's say I have an integer array. Let's say helper. So I'll have I have int inj. So let ij denote i will be the uh, first part, the first dimension of the dp array, and j will be the second dimension. Right. So in case if i is equal to equal to 0, that means I can just directly return 0. Right. This is very simple. This is our base case. Now, the next thing is I might have two cases now. Right. So let us no, take two variables int x and y. So I will initialize both of them with 0 and I will check a if condition. So what should be inside this if condition? Let us consider a case when I want to take the current index right? or the current rod length. So if I take the current rod length, my remaining rod length will be n minus the current rod length. So j minus i. Now I can only take this if it is at least greater than minus. right? If it becomes minus 1, that means I cannot take the current rod length because i cannot take a rod length which is greater than the current rod length right so j minus i should be at least greater than minus one or you can i can also write it as like this j minus i is greater than equal to zero right only if it is true let me assume that i am taking the current rod length so it will be equal to price of i plus let me call the helper function i i will remain as it is and j minus i right why because i am taking the current rod length of size i Right. So price of i is something that I'll get. Now, remember I said that I will not change if I'm considered taking the current uh, rod length or the or a rod length i, I will not change its length. I will still be at the same position because there might be a case when I, I would again want to consider it. So my value of x will be equal to price of i plus helper of i will remain as it is and the length of the rod will decrease by i. So it is j minus i. Right. Now what happens with y? Y in with the help of y, I'll do I call helper of 
i minus 1 and j will remain as it is because i'm not considering it raw this specific rod length i so i will move on to position i minus 1 and i will never take again i right so this is something that i have and i will return dp of ij is equals to max of x comma y right and there is also one more thing that you should have here is if if dp of ij is not equals to minus 1 that means i have already calculated this and i can just directly return dp of ij right so this is our code and you will see that this is very simple and not very difficult to code and now i will tell you how you can convert this particular code into uh, a bottom up approach right so converting it into a bottom up approach or any dynamic programming question is not very difficult i'll tell you a standard way of doing this which you can apply anywhere so you see there is something that we are doing in here right so this part is very important for us this part is very important for us and this is the only logic that we have for any particular state i and j right so this is associated with memoization right because we are dealing with base cases this is also associated with memoization because if a state is already present i don't need to calculate it again right and this remaining part this remaining part is actually calculating the answer for dpf ij right so can we use the same part again in our uh, bottom up approach now let us find out so during our bottom up approach first of all i am just going to form simple two for loops and it will be like for for int i is equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus right now i am going to do again a for loop j is equal to 0 j j is less than n and j plus plus so let me just directly copy this particular part that i have written here right so i am calculating two variables int x comma y x x is equal to y is equal to 0 x is equal x is equal to y is equal to 0 and then i am checking if j minus i is greater than equals to 0 then what i'll do x is equals to price of i plus me instead of writing now helper function i'll just directly write dp of i and j minus i right again y will be equals to dp of i minus 1 and j and dp of ij will be equals to max of x comma y now i can just close this particular loop and then again close so you see converting a top down approach into a bottom up approach was not very difficult this is all you had to do in any other dp problem as well i'm telling you if you have an idea for a top down approach the only thing you need to do is you need to take care of what are all the things that, I'm, that my answer is depending on right so there are two variables here i and g right so i make two for loops as simple as that now i just directly write what is inside this main logic and i directly copy it here right so the only thing the only thing that you need to care take care of while writing this uh, bottom up approach is that you will see that in this case our answer of dp of ij is depending on dp of ij minus 1 right so if your answer for dp of ij is depending on something like dp of i j minus 1 so now you know that this particular value should be calculated before this particular value that means the loop for loop for j should be a forward for loop right similarly for this particular part also if dp of ij is depending on dp of i minus 1 j that means the the for loop for i should also be a forward loop but let us assume a case in any other dp problem if you find like this dp of ij is equals to dp of i plus 1 and then j that means the value of i plus 1 should be calculated before i in this case your for loop for i should be in reverse order right this is the only thing that you need to take care of while writing the bottom up approach other than this particular thing all the other things will remain same and as it is right and you will see that the like you will you can easily omit a few lines these particular lines you can safely avoid while writing a bottom up approach so you can omit this particular part in this particular part right you it is very redundant you don't have to write it again and this was all about today's problem of the day so let me just also show you my code so i have written this particular code in bottom up approach 
So this is this is the exact code that I've written there. So I've created a vector double dimensional vector of size n plus one. Now I take a for loop from one to n plus one. So the only difference is here I think I've written zero based indexing, but it doesn't really matter. You just have to like compute the same thing. So I've taken one based indexing here and uh, for both i and j. And I have two variables x and y. I both set both of them equals to zero. Only if j minus i is greater than minus one, that means my current rod length is at least equal to the length of the rod that I'm trying to cut. Only if this is true, I'll set, I'll update my value of x and I'll update my value of y. And dp of ij will be equal to max of x and y. At the end, all that I have to do is I have to return dp of n comma n. Now there is one thing that you must have observed. I am doing price of i minus one. This is only because I was taking one based indexing here, and the price array that they have given us is zero based indexing, right? So let me just quickly submit this and show it to you that this works. So you see that it passes all the test cases, and this code is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then definitely consider dropping a like, and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. Any general thing you would like to share, or anything about the problem that you wanted to write down, you can share it down. As your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you, and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So, share the channel with your friends and also subscribe because I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. So, if you are one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. So, till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye bye.